Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a Finnish film called, The Winter War. Spoilers incoming. The movie starts with two brothers, Marty and Pavo, leaving their home to join the Finnish military. They arrive at the base where the other recruits aren't given uniforms or are given ones that don't fit them. A small fight breaks in the base over alcohol. Later on, the recruits are finally lined up and told about how the Russians are demanding a large piece of land from Finland and that negotiations are still ongoing. They are then dismissed and told that they'll be eating dinner before they leave. Pavo asks Marty where they're going but Marty doesn't answer. The recruits say their goodbyes to their loved ones before they board a train to Sinahoki. During the ride, the older recruits start to tease Pavo while he broods. Marty tells them off and the conversation shifts to the negotiations. They arrive the next morning and Marty asks the higher ranking officers to put him and his brother in the same unit, to which they agree. The two brothers later find out that their half-brother, Vilho, is also in the same unit. While they're eating, a higher ranking officer takes the two brothers to retrieve their field kitchen from another unit. The unit stops them from taking it and another officer arrives, verifying that the brother's unit disowned the field kitchen. After that, the soldiers are given dog tags and they have a religious service before they board another train, though they don't know the destination. The soldiers also discuss about the negotiations, with another round happening as the Finnish diplomat returns to Moscow. They do a quick stop in a town where some soldiers get out from the train even though they're not allowed to. By night, Vilho recites some poetry and is mocked by another soldier for doing so. Their trip has another stop and a senior soldier, Ely, starts a fire. A younger soldier tells him that he shouldn't as it may attract the enemy although Ely says that a fire is the first thing you make during war. A superior officer passes by their group and commends Ely for starting the fire. They then continue the journey on foot. Later, some soldiers are having questions about where they're going. Pavo complains that his feet hurt and Marty tells him that he should have used his old shoes. Pavo then says that he thought new shoes would be nice for war. The next morning, a ship horn wakes up the soldiers and they think that there's trouble. The horses get scared and become rowdy, so some of the soldiers try to rally them back. They then see that a ship just docked and is carrying supplies meanwhile. Pavo approaches a group of girls and flirts with the quiet one named Aino. They tell him that she's sad for her fiancé, who is a soldier assigned somewhere else. Marty arrives and invites Pavo to go back to their tent for some coffee. Before he leaves, Pavo checks out a merchant selling scarves. Later, the soldiers learned that they would be required to give back their first salary to the army so they could use it to fund weapons. They list down their names in agreement. Afterward, Pavo leaves the tent. Marty helps plow the fields of a local, as her husband is also another soldier at the front. After that, he leads the horse back to a shed and catches Pavo and Aino inside. They tell him that they were just talking and leave to continue elsewhere. Pavo flirts with Aino although she rejects him at first because of her fiancé. He persists and she starts to take off her clothes one by one. Marty returns to the local's house and asks to buy her pies. She exits her room and he's disappointed to find a fellow soldier, Arvi, coming out of her bedroom. He buys her pies and he and Arvi leave. The soldiers start to fortify the defenses in town just as the locals are being evacuated. They soon find out that they're not allowed any vacation leaves anymore because the Russians have crossed the border. Marty wakes the other soldiers after hearing this news. Their entire platoon is lined up as their commanding officer says a speech about how they'll fight back at the Russians despite their aggression. Later on, they navigate through the forest while there are explosions around them. One soldier tells Ely to get down or he'll get hit, but he doesn't listen and doesn't take the whole situation seriously. They later find him dead after he hit his head on a rock. The Russians start to approach the Finnish trenches and start their attack using tanks along with the soldiers. One soldier takes a rifle from an injured soldier as they take him away to a first aid station. Pavo asks about the condition of the injured soldier later on and finds out that he died as soon as he was brought to the first aid station. That night, Marty and another soldier loot the corpses of the Russians. They return to their shelter and Marty notices that there's blood on his hands. Vilho asks if he was injured and he explains that it was from the dead Russians they looted. The Finnish soldiers are surprised by the Russians the next morning. Their enemy is already in the trenches after managing to dig through. They engage in close combat, using their bayonets to conserve ammo. A higher ranking officer also tells them to try and get some prisoners. 
The Russians get closer as Marty finds Pavo injured and quickly asks someone to check on him. The Finnish soldiers soon retaliate using hand grenades. They manage to catch one Russian soldier and attempted to keep him captive, but the soldier kills himself. Despite their losses they once again manage to keep the Russians out of the trench. The commanding officer tells them that they need more men to dig through the trenches. He also asks them the status of their unit. One of them answers that four of them died while six of them are injured. Later that night, Vilho and Marty pair together while they're in the trenches. They hear explosions and another soldier tells them not to shoot as they're from a different company. Vilho starts to become fidgety and crawls away from the trench, even though Marty tries to stop him. Back in their shelter, they take in a cat that they find outside the door. Marty starts to wonder about Vilho's safety as the others think that the Russians have taken him. Pavo is on a train the next morning as he's sent home on a leave because of his injury. Later, a commanding officer arrives and brings Vilho back to their unit. The medic gives him some medicine and they hand him their new pet cat to help him calm down. Marty asks the medic what he gave Vilho and the medic says that all he has are headache pills, meaning they gave Vilho a placebo. Pavo arrives back home and he shares a meal with his family. His mother asks about what the war was like and he says that not one of them will come out of it alive. He then leaves out of frustration. He later attends a funeral ceremony for the fallen soldiers from their town. Back in the trenches, the soldiers are warned that the Russians may be extra aggressive because it's Stalin's birthday. They look at the Russian camp from the trench and see that they look lively, with the Russians firing flares. One of them asks if they should attack the Russians then but Marty discourages this. The next morning, Pavo returns to the trenches after his leave ends. He volunteers for the night shift. Vilho then says that the cat has run off and he should have seen it. His first shift goes smoothly. The soldiers are taught how to use Molotov cocktails while the two brothers are told to keep watch over the trenches. They exit the tent and the enemy starts to bomb their area. Marty tells Pavo to stay down but Pavo keeps walking until he turns a corner. A bomb then lands where Pavo is and Marty finds him dead and blown to pieces. Marty returns to the shelter and looks at pictures of his wife and son along with some letters while he grieves for Pavo. Another explosion destroys the roof of their shelter and their attempts to contact other troops fail as the phone lines are done. The officer then asks Marty to go and inform the higher-ups that their unit needs more men and that the enemy is coming. He manages to get to the next sector where the commanding officer tells him that he'll go to their base soon and that at the moment, they can only send more soldiers if desperately needed because the Russians are attacking different places all at once. Marty goes back with that news when an attack happens again. One soldier asks why their artillery wasn't working and another explains that the ammo they received was too big. They then see that the Russians outnumber them greatly. He gives Pavo's rifle to Vilho. The Finnish soldiers manage to take down a lot of the Russians until a tank gets too close and scorches one of them. The Finnish sabotage the tank using the Molotov cocktails. After the fight, Marty places the pieces of Pavo in a cart to be sent back to their homes. Christmas comes and the soldiers receive some cigarettes and food. A higher ranking officer arrives and assures them that if they can't handle it anymore then he can just send some replacements. The unit's leader assures them that they can take it and he receives a pair of boots. Some reinforcements also arrive and they have a small religious service in their shelter as some of them go out of the trench to sing some Christmas psalms. Later, they wash and cut their hair before the unit leader gathers them around for a picture. The attacks continue although there are only bombs and explosions with no soldiers and tanks approaching the trenches. A plane suddenly passes by them and releases letters with the same message urging them to surrender. One soldier takes a few pieces and says that he's going to take a dump with them. He manages to walk to the trees when a bomb lands where he is, killing him. A soldier approaches the unit leader to tell him that water started leaking inside their bunker and asks for permission for him and the other soldiers to leave. He approves but tells the soldier that some soldiers must stay to guard the bunker. Later on, some officials confront the unit leader and scold him for doing so, citing that the Russians managed to take the bunker and that the soldiers guarding it got scared and ran away. Another unit gets assigned to take it back Marty's unit eventually joins the attempt to retrieve the bunker. One officer yells at the bunker and the Russians to surrender as they'll blow up the bunker in five minutes. They continue their defense and manage to kill Arvi. Marty gets permission to go home. 
Once there, he lies to his mother about how Pavo died, saying it was a bullet to the heart in instant. His mother then says that they weren't allowed to open the coffin and that whoever carried Pavo said it sounded like there were pieces of him inside. Marty stands by his lie. That night, his mother lets Marty's son sleep with her while he and his wife have some privacy. After that, Marty returns to his unit and they get assigned to shoot any Russians that cross the river. He encounters a soldier who hits him with his gun instead of shooting and Marty manages to kill him. Marty gets assigned to send a message again to the headquarters. On the way, he gets surprised by a soldier that is disguised and directs him to the way. Once there, he passes on the message that they need more men in their unit. He sits down and hears the officers discuss the request, saying that they don't have more men to send. Marty dozes off and another soldier wakes him up before giving him some coffee beans to chew on. On the way back, he gets attacked by Russian planes. He survives and meets up with one of his companions, who's carrying a soldier on his back. Marty finds out that the injured soldier is Vilho, who eventually dies. Marty and the other soldier start their trek back again while carrying Vilho's corpse. Another bomb hits their area, injuring the other soldier, although he manages to stay alive and gets carted away by a horse. That night, their unit gets informed that they would have to assist the soldiers of Nermo in their attack the next morning. They watch from the side as the attack is delayed and they are easily defeated by the Russians. After overpowering the Nermo soldiers, they shift their attention to Marty's unit. They start to retreat as the enemy is just too many. The battle continues for one more day and their unit suffers more losses. They are about to be defeated until the unit leader rushes toward Marty and informs them that the war was over as Finland bowed down to some of Russia's diplomatic demands. The movie ends as the Russian soldiers get up and cheer in celebration while Marty has a somber look on his face. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.